Getting married is a big milestone in the lives of people. One looks forward to a life of love and companionship, a life of intimacy and togetherness. But unfortunately, marriage also brings with it a life filled with expectations. And perhaps the biggest expectation, at least here in India, is to have children. Life is not always smooth sailing, and sometimes couples are not blessed with children even after many years of marriage. And it is during this time when one is faced with this burden of increasing societal expectations and also one's own desire to have children that one is forced to consider the various options of artificial reproductive technologies. The purpose of this video is not to pass judgment, but rather to make you aware of what the teachings of the Catholic Church are. Before we begin to look at the details, let me ask you a question. When do you think life begins in a human being? Is it option A, when the baby is born? Is it option B, when the fetus takes the form of a human baby? Is it option C, when the heartbeat begins to develop in the fetus? Or the last one, when the ovum or the egg is fertilized by the sperm? If you answered A, B or C, then your understanding of human life is not the same as that of the Catholic Church. Respect for human life is called for from the time that the process of generation begins, from the time that the ovum is fertilized, a life is begun which is neither that of the father nor of the mother. It is rather the life of a new human being with his own growth. With the advancement in medical sciences today, couples who are not able to conceive have a plethora of options. The most popular among them is IVF or in vitro fertilization. To understand why the church opposes this procedure, we need to understand this whole procedure completely. During IVF, mature eggs are retrieved from the ovaries and fertilized by sperm in a lab. This fertilized egg is known as an embryo. The fertilized embryo or embryos are then transferred to a uterus where the growth of the fetus continues as usual. Sounds fairly simple, doesn't it? There appears to be nothing wrong or unethical in this process. So what's the problem of the church, you might ask? The devil, as usual, lies in the details. A woman normally produces one egg during each menstrual cycle. However, IVF requires multiple eggs, as using multiple eggs increases the chances of developing a viable embryo. A woman receives fertility drugs to increase the number of eggs in her body. All these eggs are fertilized with a sperm in a petri dish and the most viable or suitable ones are chosen. So what happens to those human embryos which are not transferred to the uterus? And also what happens if there is multiple pregnancies? The extra human embryos are at times frozen and stored for future use or donated to research or donated to another couple. But mostly, these extra human embryos are discarded or destroyed. In the case of multiple pregnancies as well, the healthier human embryo is preserved and the rest are removed. And this is precisely what the church is against. The Catholic Church regards all life as sacred and considers the killing of a human being as a violation of the divine law an offence against the dignity of the human person, a crime against life and an attack on humanity. There is another important reason why the church is against IVF and also against other methods like artificial insemination, sterilization, zygote intrafallopian transfer and surrogacy. According to the Catholic Church, the two ends of marriage 
are union and procreation. Union refers to the physical coming together of the husband and wife. Procreation refers to the giving birth to children. At the same time, each and every marital act must remain open to the transmission of life. In the case of IVF and other reproductive techniques, however, the procreative and the unitive ends of marriage are completely separated. The child is a product of technology and not of natural union between a husband and wife. In life, we are often faced with tough choices. Life is not always white or black. There are a lot of grey areas. The field of biomedical ethics is very vast and involves a variety of subjects. I have only addressed one of the issues here. I hope that you now have more clarity regarding the Church's teachings on artificial reproductive techniques. If you or someone you know are considering undertaking these treatments, I will strongly urge you to first consider all the ramifications before making any decision. Take care and I pray that God may guide us in our lives.